All right. We're going to go ahead and begin with these two, four, sixth slide in the PowerPoint. Dealing with the lesson plan. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going over each one of these uh, particular uh, parts of the lesson plan. Your book does a really good job with it. Um, I'm just going to hit the highlights with it and move on. Um, the lesson plan ought to have a subject, whatever it is that, that you're covering that day. Um, also, um, certainly if you're teaching more than one class, you can certainly put your uh, the class uh, that you're teaching right there, whether it would be uh, English, um, some diesel uh, course number um, in the technical college system um, at the secondary level. It may just strictly be um, the subject that, that you're teaching that particular hour of, of the day. The title of your lesson, what, what, it is, what is it that, that you're covering? Simple as that. The time period uh, at the secondary level, you may have um, first period, second period, third period, and so forth and so on. Uh, your classes may not be at the same um, particular point in the uh, in the course, so you may have different uh, preparations. But uh, obviously, uh, but in the time period that you're going to be dealing with this lesson, type of lesson is it going to be a lecture, demonstration, uh, homework? Uh, Whatever. Just uh, make sure that you will designate that um, place where it's taking place. Training aids. Nice thing to do is to uh, kind of list what you're going to need before you uh, go out there and have to find it. Uh, believe me, from experience, usually uh, you start losing things whenever you really need them. Uh, they're right there underneath your feet when you don't need them, but then come time to get the job done, can't find it. So get your training aids lined up beforehand, you won't have a problem. Your objectives ought to be listed right there, what it is you, you want to accomplish in, in that lesson. And then your instructor references. Um, what kind of background in information are you going to need? Do you need some some reference uh, material, uh, slides, transparencies, PowerPoints, things like that, to in order to get the lesson done? Those kinds of uh, things are good are, are are good to have on hand whenever you're ready for them. They're right there for you. And finally, your student references and homework. Uh, I know a lot of students, when I was teaching the sec in, the, in the secondary level, didn't bring their books to class. Not a whole lot you, you, you can do whenever you're, uh, you don't have your textbook. Certainly, if you're having them do some work out of that uh, textbook, uh, make sure that, that the students have what they, what, what they need to get it done. And then um, any homework assignments that you may uh, decide to... Uh, have them do in order to prepare for that particular lesson. To continue with the lesson delivery itself, the last uh, slide to, talks about the lesson outline. How are you going to get this thing done? Well, there uh, are number of ways to do this. Chronological order, spatial order, psychological order. Um, normally, we teach the course when it comes up in the uh, scope and sequence. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've never worried too much about the any one of those three 
points right there. Whatever I, I, I put together a lesson plan. Obviously that lesson is going to come at the appropriate time in the uh, scope and sequence of the course. Uh, whether my students are ready for it or, or not, it's next. Um, and so, uh, be nice to be able to spend the time to be able to do that, but yeah, we just need to move on to the next uh, four things, the introduction, presentation, application, and evaluation. That is really for, for you and I make our, our uh, money. Providing some kind of introduction in, into the lesson. Usually that's tying up the lesson with the, the previous day's work or as the previous lesson's um, content so that we can build one step higher that level of skill or, or knowledge that our students need to be able to uh, proceed in, in the course. But the introduction is a great way to uh, help them remember what they should have learned and then now give them the new stuff. The presentation. All the stuff we talked about in the, uh, the slide before to have all this stuff ready on hand, ready to go um, and make this thing flow as, as, uh, as best we can. Uh, is something that uh, it takes takes some time to, to, to prepare for. You just don't throw a, a lesson together and get it done. Then once the lesson is uh, presented, then how do you apply that lesson? How do you apply that knowledge? And so it may be in order to take a test, maybe in order to do a lab assignment, whatever it takes. The students need to be able to see that there's some application there. And then finally the evaluation portion. Do we give a little quiz at the end of the, of, of the lesson to make sure that they were listening? Um, I've, I've, I've done that before uh, with mixed results. Uh, will the students be tested um, in a chapter test, unit test, whatever? Uh, will they be evaluated by the, the, the quality of work that they get done uh, on the assignments? And so that's a number, number of ways to do it. It's just doing it in order that, that you can see whether or not you taught the lesson as it needs to be taught, that uh, there's uh, some knowledge that was uh, passed on, the students got it, or if they didn't get it, you ought to know it by the uh, evaluation component there. So that pretty much ends the uh, the PowerPoint. I guess to kind of wrap things up for the chapter, you know, you and I have got to be able to teach our uh, program to others just, you know, winging it isn't going to get it done. We have to be able to be organized and be able to get our lessons, whether we have to create them ourselves or else uh, they're already made for us. Get those lessons, be comfortable uh, doing those lessons. That may take some work from home where you kind of go over the lesson you know, when I was first starting out, I spent some time in front of the mirror, just doing the lecture or demonstrating something. I'd practice when, during my free period or else after school doing this uh, demonstration so I, so I would get it right because there's nothing more embarrassing than, than to see a demonstration go uh, go south real, real quick and um, you kind of you know, feel pretty bad but also kind of lose some credibility um, with, with your students so yes it's difficult yes you don't have the time but you and I have got to make the time to be able to get these lessons set up and then demonstrations 
set up a four time, have a run through, so that we can be confident. And that confidence builds on success. And then after a while, you do this enough, you want your uh, your preparation time is going to go down because you've done this before, you've practiced this, and you're comfortable with it. But, it's, but whenever you're first starting out, you know, and it, and it may be two, three years before, or or more before you reach that that level uh, that you can be confident enough to be able to step right in, know exactly what you need, knock it out real quick, and uh, your students, you know say, hey, that man or woman knows what they're talking about. I can uh, count on them. And let's face it, having our students uh, respect and, uh, and, and trust is just almost the whole, the whole nine yards of teaching. So I'm going to have one little, more little lect uh, lecture here, but I'm going to try something different uh, and kind of talk about the assignment that I've got for you in this chapter with the video. So you'll be seeing that there also. But that's going to end this one right here.